Around my neck here are one of my favorite possessions. These are the old Bose QC35 II wireless noise canceling headphones. I do not travel anywhere without these headphones, but it got me wondering how much better has the technology gotten? Bose has come out with some new headphones. I've heard great things about Sony. We've got the AirPod Max here, even Beats. And I've got even a pair of cheapos that were highly rated on Amazon as well. Are today's headphones better than what I currently own? We're about to find out. And you don't just have to take my word for it because I'm inviting a bunch of friends over. We're all going to test all of these headphones and hopefully we will get to the bottom of this and figure out what the best wireless noise canceling headphones on the market currently are. Let's get to it. This video is sponsored by Tamron's brand new super telephoto zoom lens, the 150 millimeter to 500 millimeter lens made for Sony full frame e-mount cameras. If you guys have ever looked into sports or wildlife photography and you've looked up super telephoto lenses before, constant aperture non-zooming lenses can cost over $10,000. But if you're looking for that insane reach and you want a lens that actually fits in your bag and is about 10% of the cost of one of those other super telephoto lenses, check out the 150 to 500. With an aperture range of f5 to 6.7, this lens is plenty fast enough to shoot most wildlife and sports activities, and it still has all of the incredible features that you might find in much more expensive lenses. It has super fast focusing, it has image stabilization, it also has a zoom lock to keep that lens from creeping as well. If you shoot Sony and you're looking for a super telephoto lens, definitely consider the 150 to 500 millimeter by Tamron. Now I wanted to do this test to figure out which wireless noise canceling headphones were the absolute best. I have loved my Bose headphones for years, but if there's something better on the market, I wanna buy it for me personally. But after three days of testing with seven different people, I can confidently tell you that there is no right answer. None of us could agree on which one of these pairs was best. We couldn't even agree on which one sounded the best or which one felt the best or which one had the best noise canceling we each had our own individual favorite. So I'm not going to be able to tell you at the end of this video, you should definitely buy this one because it's clearly the best. But hopefully by the end of this video, I'll be able to give you enough information about each one of these headphones and you can figure out your own personal use case and things like ear size, and maybe you'll be able to narrow it down to one or two that you should try before you buy. All of these headphones are going to remain in this order through this entire video. We're gonna start over here with the cheapest. These are the Anchor Life Soundcore Q30s. The only reason I bought these was because they had incredible ratings on Amazon and they were only $79. So I thought I'd throw a pair of cheapos in there as well. These are the Bose QC35 twos, but I've had these for years. They have since been replaced with the QC 45s, which is this right here. These are the Bose 700 headphones. These blue ones here are the Sony WH-1000 XM4. I'm just gonna call them XM4s. And these are the brand new XM5s that literally just came out a couple of days ago. These are the Beats Studio 3s, and these are the Apple AirPod Maxes. So when I first got all of these unboxed, the first test I wanted to do was basic sound quality. I got five different songs on a playlist that each sounds completely different and I went through each one of these headphones back and forth for an hour and a half. And after an hour and a half, I felt like I had a really good understanding of what each one of these headphones sounded like and which one I thought was clearly the best. Now, the shocking thing to me was that when I had my friends and my wife come in here and try all of these, everybody seemed to have a different opinion of which one sounded best. So yeah, Soundcore okay. for me is just one. This is the worst sounding one. My favorite ones were, were the, the Bose ones. Yeah, then these are better. I think the apples might sound a little better. And that's what makes this entire process so frustrating because I certainly think I know what sounds best. I mean, it's clear to me that the Apple AirPods Max sounds way better than all of these other headphones, but not everybody agreed with me. My wife could definitely hear what I was hearing in the AirPod Maxes, but she just didn't like what it sounded like. Yeah, I don't like how this is really tinny soundy. My wife, who apparently can't stand the sound of treble and high notes, thought that the XM5 sounded the best. And to most of us, we actually found that these headphones sounded quite muddy. Uh, I heard like a uh, muddiness. Yes. Even when you compare these to the XM4s, most of us agreed that the older XM4s sounded better 
than the brand new XM5s. Almost everyone who did the test thought that all three of the Bose headphones sounded almost exactly the same. And I was bummed out by that because I was excited to upgrade my old Bose headphones. I was excited to have that new, better sound quality in the new headphones, but I wasn't really hearing it. So obviously we all had different opinions, but there was one thing that everyone could agree on. These sound the worst. By far, far the worst audio quality is the Beats. To me, the, the Beats one. Be no, I can just, nope. Now, personally, I thought it was obvious that the worst sounding headphones were the Beats. Everybody said that until just a second ago, I had my business partner, Patrick, come in, try all of these. The Beats, these sounded really good to me. In case you guys don't know, Patrick used to be a professional musician. He should have incredibly tuned ears. I don't know how he got this so wrong, but after forcing him to do a few more tests, he agreed with me that the AirPods Maxes were actually the best. And then after more tests, he completely flip-flopped his earlier opinion. Maybe the Beats are the worst? <laughs> maybe the Beats, like maybe it's Beats and then these. Are, are what? Are the worst. But like you said those were the best and those were the second best the first time I asked you. Surprisingly, my top two pair of headphones when it comes down just to sound quality is the AirPod Maxes. Uh, these are clearly the best. Uh, in fact, they're the best sounding headphones I've ever heard. And my second favorite are the Anchor Soundcore headphones. I can't believe it. They have incredible bass. They're definitely the most bassy out of all of these. If you're like a hip hop lover and you love that bass, these are definitely the ones to get. I feel like the bass might be a little bit more distorted though because of that extra volume. And it's just not quite as clear as the Apple's. But again, I was shocked by how good these sounded. And uh, like I said, my buddy Renee, who is a professional musician, he actually chose these as his favorite. Man, I hate to say this, man, but that sound care is pretty good. <laughs> it's not even the name of it. There sound you go. core. Sound core. All right, let's talk about comfort and fit. Almost everyone agreed that the Beats were the most uncomfortable headphones. They certainly are for me. They have the smallest ear cup holes and they don't go over my ears. They just fit on top of my ears and they smash my ears to my head and they feel horrible to me. However, Patrick must have really small ears and his ears actually fit in these holes. And so for that reason, he said these were really comfortable. The Beats don't feel bad. For me personally, all three of the Bose headphones are by far the most comfortable. They're lightweight. I love the material of the ear cups. The ear cups are incredibly deep and my big freak ears can go all the way inside the cup and they do not touch the outside of the headphones. The anchors are pretty good. Um, they, don't, they don't touch or anything. These headphones just feel super cheap and kind of rickety to me. The The Ear pads, as far as I can tell, are not replaceable. They're just cheap headphones. And so for that reason, I don't find them to be as comfortable. I was really excited to try the Sonys. This is the first time I have ever tried Sony headphones after hearing about them for years and how they're better than Bose and blah, blah, blah. These headphones are very uncomfortable to me personally. These, you, your ears touching the whole thing. Man. When I put these headphones on, my ears touch all the way inside and they don't drive me crazy at first, but I could imagine if I was wearing them for hours at work or on an airplane, it would just become tiring to have my ears pressed in. Uh, same with the XM5s, they're uncomfortable for me. And these are comfortable. They feel super comfy. Oh, interesting. No, my ears don't touch in there. The Beats, are absolutely the worst, but if you have small ears or they're for like maybe a girl or a child, these could be great. Everyone agreed that the Apple AirPods Maxes are comfortable in terms of the size of the ear holes, but the ear pads themselves are made of this kind of rough material. It doesn't hurt by any means. It's just not nearly as soft as any of these other headphones. And then of course, these are by far the heaviest. They're really heavy and the support on the top doesn't feel very supportive. I like it, but it feels heavy. I wouldn't say they're uncomfortable, but they're definitely not going to be as comfortable as similar headphones that are made of softer and lighter material. All right, let's talk about buttons and ergonomics. You might call me an old grandpa, but I personally like physical buttons. I have not enjoyed these three headphones here that have touch controls. They drive me crazy. 
This uh, Anchor Soundcore headphone has really cheap small buttons on the bottom that just sound really clicky and cheap to press. They're hard for my fingers to find. Um, although these are physical buttons and I appreciate that, these definitely are not really pleasant to use. The QC35 and 45 here have the exact same button layout. Something that I absolutely love is that they have a physical switch to turn them on and off, and they have a light that is always on when they are on, so you can tell if they've been left on or not. And then all of the other buttons, volume, uh, stop, start, and the noise canceling button, they're the same on both of these. It's what I'm used to, so that may not be fair, but I personally like these the best. The Bose 700s here have three physical buttons, but then if you wanna change the volume or you wanna change the track, you're still tapping and swiping and stuff. I personally don't like it. It's also loud to like hit the things that are on your ear. I don't find it to be pleasant to do that. Similarly, the two Sony headphones have two physical buttons, but then on the right ear pad, you're tapping and swiping and stuff. And I just, I can never tell if they're on and I just, it drives me crazy, but maybe I'm old. The Beats headphones have physical buttons and these just do not feel good. They, they're they better than the Anchor, I'll, I'll give them that, but I don't really like the layout of these. I don't like the fact that I have to hold the power button to turn them on. I never know how long I have to hold it, how long I have to hold it to turn it off. It's just not my favorite either. The Apple AirPods Max have two physical buttons, but one of them is a button and a rotating knob. But to turn these on and off, you just have to put them on your head. And then when you take them off your head, they automatically turn off. In certain situations, that's really convenient, but in some situations, it's super annoying. Like if I'm trying to pass the headphones to somebody for them to listen, they put them on and they're off, and they're like, how do I get it to start again? And then if you want these to truly turn off all the way, you have to put them in this ridiculous bra case that turns them into like a woman's purse. This, this is the only way to get them to truly turn off is to carry a purse. I hate this so much. There's one other thing I need to mention, and that is that some of these headphones fold up, you know, like headphones should, to make them small and fit into, uh, you know, your backpack or your bag or whatever. But a few of them do not. The newest, best ones do not. So the Bose 700s do not fold. They have to go in your bag like this. The Sony XM5s do not fold. They have to go into your bag like this. And the Apples do not fold. They have to go into your purse bra like this. So if you're gonna be traveling a lot, it's not the end of the world, but it is something to consider. I hate the fact that these newer headphones are actually worse when it comes to ergonomics. Noise canceling. In our tests, when we were wearing each pair of headphones with white noise on the side, cycling between on and off on the noise canceling, everyone said that the Apple headphones had the best noise canceling. However, I think they were misled a little bit because there's no doubt these headphones have the absolute best transparency mode by far. They have microphones in them and what they do is they amplify the sound on the outside, including your own voice, to make it sound like you're not wearing headphones at all, even when you're wearing these gigantic heavy metal headphones. It sounds fantastic. I could see these being great for things like phone calls for that reason. But when you put all of these on the highest noise canceling mode, you don't toggle back and forth and you just put each pair of headphones on one by one, to me, I thought the best noise canceling headphones were actually the XM5s, the Sonys. Very close second was the QC45s by Bose. It was very apparent how far Bose has come because my QC35s, I don't know if it has to do with how old these are, but they were significantly worse when it comes to noise canceling when you compare it to almost all of these. Now, the two worst, as you could probably guess, are the Beats, Beats, we couldn't even tell if it was doing anything. They were horrible. And then the noise canceling and the anchors, not very good. Now, I wanna talk about something that's incredibly important to me, and I bet it will be important to many of you, but it's not talked about in almost any headphone review I have ever seen before, and that is wind noise and how each of these headphones 
reacts to wind outside. I personally like wearing headphones. Maybe I'm walking on the beach. Maybe I'm riding my electric skateboard. Maybe I'm riding a bicycle outside. Maybe I'm just standing outside, but it's windy. And some of these headphones can actually mitigate the sound of wind and others amplify it and make it much, much worse. And this was probably the most frustrating part of this entire review because after testing all of these outside on my electric skateboard, by far the best headphones when it comes to using them in the wind are my old Bose QC35 twos. These headphones can do noise cancellation high and it sounds really bad in wind with that. But if you put them on noise canceling low, they sound incredible in wind. They sound better than all of these in the wind. And what I was really upset about was that they got rid of this low setting in the QC45s. Uh, and these were probably the worst headphones I tested. Uh, that's not entirely true. I think the Anchors might've been the worst that I tested in wind. I didn't even test these because I hate them so much. But um, the QC45s, which I was planning on buying, are in my opinion, unusable outside in the wind. So I will never buy these. And it's really frustrating because it seems like that could literally just be a software update that allows you to click through three options rather than two on these. I don't understand why Bose made them worse. The 700s have the option of low, medium, high, but in medium mode, wind sounds really bad. So don't use that mode. And when it's in high, it sounds decent. These are usable outside in the wind, but uh, they still don't sound as good as my QC35s. The Sonys, although they sound pretty similar when you're inside, sound totally different in wind. The XM4s, I would say, are completely unusable in wind. I, I think these sounded horrible. It almost amplified the wind noise. You're getting that static sound while you're riding around outside. The XM5s sounded great in wind. Not as good as my Bose, but uh, they sounded pretty good. They were probably second place. The Apples probably came in third place. They were getting pretty close in quality with the uh, XM5s here, but still couldn't hang with the older QC35 twos. All right, finally, let's talk about design. Obviously, this is going to be a personal preference, but most of the people who did this test felt very strongly about one set of headphones. I mean, these are pretty futuristic. Nah, these look stupid. <laughs> if someone gave me those for free, I would not wear those. <laughs> okay. These look like you're gonna go on a Disney ride. Like you're gonna go on the new Minions ride. I have to admit, I feel like these headphones are beautifully designed. I love the material, but when I put these on my head and I look at myself, especially when I, you know, don't have a hat on, I just feel like these look so bad. Um, and, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to think that I care so much about the way things look that I, I wouldn't buy the best sounding headphones just because of the way they look, but these look really dumb. But I did have one friend who, who said they were his favorite. I mean, you're not, you don't, look, you don't look good in any of them, <laughs> but I say this one looks slightly better. So by now you can see my dilemma. There is literally no best option for me. If you're looking for the best noise canceling headphones because maybe you're on airplanes all the time, the XM5s or the Bose QC45s are probably your best bet. If you're looking for the best sound quality, I personally think it's the Apples, but maybe you don't like clear sounding highs. Maybe you like more muffled, smooth sounding audio. In that sense, maybe the Sony or the Bose would be right for you. If you're looking to save some money and you want some great audio quality and you don't really care about noise canceling, absolutely the Anchors are your best bet. These are the best sounding headphones for the money I have ever tested by far. But if you need a pair of headphones that sound good everywhere, on an airplane, in windy environments, and they work well because they have physical buttons and they fold up and they fit into your bag really easily. I can't believe I'm saying this, but maybe your best bet are the old Bose QC35 twos. I went into this excited that I was going to come out with a new pair of headphones that I loved. And honestly, I might just return all of these and go back to Old Faithful here. After three days on this project, the only thing I'm sure of is that these headphones are horrible and you should not buy them.
The beats, these sounded really good to me. Well guys, thank you for watching this review. If you happen to be in the video world, definitely check out the current sale going on at five day deal right now. You can literally save like 95% on $4,000 worth of video products for just $166. There's just a couple of days left. It's at the very least worth clicking over and seeing if there's anything on this list that you're interested in. And if you happen to be in the photography world, definitely check out fstoppers.com slash store where we have full length photography tutorials on all types of genres of photography filmed with famous photographers in each of their respected areas. I'll see you soon. The beats, these sounded really good to me. Yeah!